Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mayor Fox, welcome. Thank you. Congratulations on your nomination. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate your coming by my office. We had, I think, a very good and productive conversation. Yes, sir. And I appreciate uh, your time here answering our questions. Uh, I'd like to follow up on a couple of the areas that, that, that you and I discussed in my office. Sure. Uh, and I, and I want to start by revisiting uh, the conversation you just had a moment ago with, with Senator Blunt. Uh, concerning the FAA air traffic controller furloughs and, and sequestration. Uh, in my judgment, the sequestration funding levels are, are quite likely to continue. Uh, and indeed, given the fiscal and economic challenges we have, we may see even further budgetary cuts at some point in the future. Uh, and quite a few of us have been concerned uh, that the administration in implementing sequestration has been looking for ways to implement those cuts that are visible and painful and exacerbate uh, the pain of the cuts. And, and indeed, quite a few of us, I think, believed that the air traffic controller furloughs was, was an example of that. Uh, can we have a commitment from you that in, in implementing sequestration and in implementing whatever further budget cuts may, may occur down the road, that you will employ your very best efforts to target waste, fraud, and abuse, to target redundancy, to target ways to trim the fat and tighten the belt while minimizing the pain and inconvenience to customers, to the American people, while minimizing uh, unnecessary uh, inconvenience to consumers. Well, thank you for the question, Senator, and uh, I did enjoy our visit. Um, I've been telling people that, and they seem to act surprised. I don't know why, <laughs> uh, but I've had a good, good visit with you. Um, and uh, let me say that uh, a couple of things. I, I come from local government, where you've got to work within what you have. And um, as I said in response to Senator Fisher, um, I will be looking for ways to help the department not only work more efficiently, but to be even more effective at what it is charged to carry out. Um, but I don't enter into this presupposing what that actually plays out into in terms of actual reductions or whatever. Uh, I still actually uh, have hope that this country will develop a broader approach to both deficit reduction and investing in infrastructure. I'm hopeful that we can get there. Um, but if not, uh, what you can count on from me is that I will, I will do my best um, to make the best of the situation we have uh, w with sequestration, if that is indeed what we have. Uh, I cannot guarantee you that there will be painless choices. Um, uh, by definition, the sequester is a bit of a blunt instrument. And um, uh, my guess is, is that given the fact that three quarters of the department's budget isn't um, subject to the sequester, and yet the overall caps on spending are, that there will, there will probably be some places where there is significant uh, pain. But I don't walk into the door looking to make life miserable for people. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in the door trying to help make our transportation system work. And, and so it's fair to say that you would look for ways to minimize the pain and not to exacerbate it. I would look for ways to, uh, to make our uh, department function as effectively as possible with the least amount of pain possible. But I think we're in a situation uh, with sequester where there's going to be pain. Uh, I'd like to shift to another topic that you and I, I think, had a very productive conversation on, and that concerned regulation and the impact of government regulation uh, retarding economic growth, killing jobs, uh, and the need for regulatory reform, which is, which is a principle that the, the President has publicly espoused. Uh, and in our conversation, you likewise expressed significant agreement with that. Is that a, a fair characterization of your views? Regarding regulatory burdens? Yes. Well, yeah. And I actually think the President agrees with that. Um, he's issued executive orders across agencies asking them to review their regula regulations to figure out ways to streamline. And as recently as last week announced another streamlining 
uh, set of um, uh, provisions. So I, I think that there is broad agreement that if we can streamline processes, make them move more effic efficiently and effectively, and deliver projects faster, that's good for the country. I, I would note that just recently the Congressional uh, Research Service released a report that indicates that during the first four years of President Obama's administration that the administration issued more than 13,000 final rules, which, which was substantially more than its predecessor. And indeed, there were 330 major rules, rules that have economic impact of $100 million or greater. And that represented a 24 percent increase from the second term of the Bush administration. And, and given the concerns you raised about working to minimize uh, the harm of regulations, would you agree in your first 100 days as Secretary, if you are confirmed, uh, to work to identify at least three regulations within your purview that, that in your judgment are unduly burdensome, and to, to work with me to ameliorate that burden? Senator, um, let me say this, that if I find 10 that we can eliminate or reduce, um, I'd like to do that. Um, but I can't do it blindly. Um, I, I'm not in the job now. If confirmed, I'd like an opportunity to visit with you and extend this conversation and uh, see where we can, where we can take things. But, uh, you know, there are, you know, my interest is in making sure that this department continues to serve its mission. So safety, critical mission of the agency. Um, there are a lot of ways in which the agency touches on the environment. Um, and, and so to the extent that we can figure out ways to minimize the burden without compromising safety, without compromising um, the delivery of projects and so forth, um, I think that we, we have some common ground that we can work on, but I, I couldn't tell you chapter and verse where that is today. Well, I will certainly accept as a friendly amendment uh, to work on 10 instead of 3. <laughs> uh, and, and, and if I may ask the, the Chairman's indulgence to, to ask one additional question, although my time has expired. Uh, and, and, and the final question I, I wanted to ask is, uh, there's a provision in MAP 21 that, that, that allows states to assume responsibilities for environmental studies and clearances. And, and one of the significant impediments to building new transportation mm -hmm. projects can be those clearances. Uh, it's referred to as NEPA delegation. And, and prior to this year, California was the only state to assume NEPA delegation. Uh, the state of Texas is now embarking on the same path. Indeed, the legislature recently passed legislation. The governor signed it. Uh, to do so, California has already been able to realize a 25 percent cost and time savings as a result of the NEPA delegation. And Texas will now have to petition the department uh, to be granted authority for NEPA delegation. Uh, and if you are confirmed, I wanted to ask your, your approach to, to, to how you will approach th that petition that will be forthcoming. Well, um, of course, there are systems in place to review those types of petitions, and uh, I'd have to have the information in front of me uh, <coughs> with a recommendation from the department to be able to review. Um, but I think that if um, if we can find ways, this is another way to help streamline processes. You know, if the requirements are met uh, and we can move forward, I would look forward to doing that. But I would count that as one of the ten. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are agreed on that. Uh, and, and, and let me say thank you for your candor. I look forward to our working together, and I look forward to supporting your nomination. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator.